Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. And in another video that indicates where things may be headed, I'm going to do the headline here. Hothouse Earth could soon be unavoidable. Researchers say the world may be approaching a tipping point followed by a dangerous slide towards hothouse Earth, an overheated planet. There are some who would argue that the tipping point has already been surpassed with respect to uh, the ice sheets. This is referring to a tipping point uh, based on the temperature. So, human actions threaten to push the planet into a new state called hothouse earth in which a world global average temperature could stabilize at 4 degrees C or even 5 degrees C higher than they have been for most of human history. And of course, with that, global sea level two would rise by 10 meters. That's a conservative estimate. I've seen other estimates that indicate it could be considerably higher, up to, I've seen 50 to 75 meters. But still, 10 meters is 33 feet. That will just about drown pretty much every coastal city on the planet. Such a transition might happen in only a century or two, but once started, there might be no stopping it. Now, a century or two, that's again what the best modeling is indicating. It would be uncontrollable and dangerous to many, and it poses severe risk for health, economies, political stability, and ultimately the habitability of the planet for humans. And the scientists who have completed a survey of the research literature, basically say there's, not, there's no knowing how close the threshold of dramatic change might be. The planet is already warmed by one degree in the sea in the last century, warmed by 1.3, and the thermometer is climbing at the rate of 0.17 degrees C per decade on average. Even if we're able to keep the target temperature increase of no more than 2 degrees C by the end of the century, no, no, we're going to blow past that, humans might already have triggered a cascade of feedbacks that would set the planet sliding to a point harder than any time in the last 10 million years. Now let's keep in mind the Paris Accord in 2015, way insufficient, really un underscored the uh, the mark. It was just doesn't go didn't go far enough. I'd say we're already at 1.3 degrees C. We're gonna well we're gonna blow well past 1.5 by the by 2030. So trying to keep it to two degrees C by 2100. I don't see that happening, to be quite blunt. So researchers led by Will Steffen of the Australian National University, along with some uh, uh, colleagues from the European Climate Science, report in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences that they consider 10 natural processes, among them a number of tipping points, that could lead to change once a certain temperature threshold has been crossed. These feedbacks could turn what are right now carbon sinks, stores of atmospheric carbon locked away in the soils and the forest, into sources of greenhouse gases that could accelerate global warming. In other words, these carbon sinks become carbon sources. How many times have you heard me discuss with you the per permafrost issue? Permafrost contains a lot of methane. As the permafrost thaws, biological activity then starts releasing the methane. Little positive feedback loop, right? I've, I've, just, I've walked that through you guys with you countless times before. You, you know what that's all about. More CO2, more warming, more thawing, more, CO, uh, more CH4, excuse me, and CO2. But, you know, more CH4, more warming, more thawing, more CH4, more, more warming, etc. Becomes a runaway system. These future hazards include thawing of the permafrost, loss of methane hydrates stored in the ocean floor, Another problem, and it is happening. Weakening of carbon stores both on land and in the oceans, increasing bacterial activity in the seas, 
died back in the tropical Amazon forest, translation, cutting down trees, and in the cool forests of the north, cutting down trees, loss of sea ice in the Arctic summer, and loss of Antarctic sea ice and polar ice sheets. These will all lead to positive feedback loops, which are loops that exacerbate the situation. Remember, if you lose the sea ice, you lose the albedo. So the sun energy, instead of being reflected back into space, is absorbed by the water. These tipping elements can potentially act like a row of dominoes. Once one is pushed over, right, it just pushes Earth towards another. It may be very difficult or impossible to stop the whole row of dominoes from tumbling over. Places on Earth will become uninhabitable if hothouse Earth becomes a reality. That is a statement from Johan Rockström of the Stockholm Resilience Center. And a participant in this study. A co-author, Hans Joachim uh, Schellen Huber, who directs the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. The Potsdam Institute, a brief moment here, is a major climate uh, change institute. It's located in Germany. So, uh, Professor Sheldon Huber uh, states, we show how industrial age greenhouse gas emissions force our climate and ultimately the Earth system out of balance. He continues, in particular, we address tipping elements in the planetary machinery that might, once a certain level has been passed, one by one change fundamentally, rapidly, and perhaps irreversibly. The cascade of events may tip the entire Earth system into a nude mode of operation. I just uh, did a video tribute to the late uh, Wally Broker, where he discussed about you know, the modes of operation of the planet Earth, and in particular that the, the switching on and off of the conveyor belt could take place on the order of decades, not centuries. So that's kind of the... Uh, what this, uh, what Dr. Uh, Schellenhuber is uh, alluding to here. Now, this message is disturbing, it is alarming, but it's basically it's a restatement of previous findings and a reconsider reconsideration of existing evidence enhanced by lessons from the more recent geological past, in which rocks and fossils buried with them tell a story of dramatic changes in temperature sea level. So in other words, it's a confirmation of previous study findings which are bolstered by uh, more recent data that lends further support to the thinking and it, it simply uh, indicates where things are most likely headed. Other researchers have raised the hazard of tipping point that could send the climate into a state of irre irreversible change. Professor Stefan three years ago warned that of the nine safe planetary boundaries that kept Earth in a stable climate state, four had already been crossed. Let me repeat that again. Of the nine safe planetary boundaries that kept Earth in a stable climate state, four had already been crossed. Potsdam scientists have already proposed that human release of greenhouse gases has now lifted the Earth from its million-year cycle of ice ages and interglacials into a new state known variously as the Anthropocene and the deglacial. Stockholm scientists have joined them in warning that there's more uncertainties and climate stresses to come. Basically, what's happened is the equilibrium of the Earth has been perturbed, upset. And it is trying to find its new equilibrium state, but because the system keeps being perturbed, it's not able to settle into its new equilibrium state. That's basically what they're saying here. Now, you have also heard me argue that because of the, all the meltwater being added to the North Atlantic and also off Antarctica, that the conveyor belt will be affected, and if that shuts down, then that could point us right back into an ice age. The big question, and I don't know the answer to this, is, is there enough thermal inertia in the system to forestall this? 
to offset it, to to stop it, or delay it, what have you. What is the, how much thermal inertia in the system is there that might prevent this from happening or delaying it by however long? That's the big question. And don't forget, there's already been a measured slowdown in deep water formation, to, and with that goes the slowdown in the Gulf Stream, because as the deep water sinks, it basically pulls the Gulf Stream along on the surface. Well, if this slows down, then the Gulf Stream is going to slow down, and you're going to slow down the heat transfer mechanism. So, and basically, this new study re-examines the possibilities. Again, looking at the previous data and adding the new data that is available. And once again, spells out the dangers in language of uncompromising clarity. Basically, they're not pulling any punches. So there's no uh, jargon talk, if you will. They're just basically stating it bluntly. And this is a direct quote from the scientists. The Earth system may be approaching a planetary threshold that could lock in a continuing rapid pathway towards much hotter condition, hothouse Earth. This pathway would be propelled by strong intrinsic biogeophysical feedbacks difficult to influence by human actions. A pathway could not be reversed, steered, or substantially slowed. And the authors warned the impact on human society would be massive, sometimes abrupt and undoubtedly disruptive. And as I stated before, Earth has been extremely hot, hotter in the past. But those very hot temperatures in the past would not have allowed for human civilization to flourish or even exist. In other words, inhospitable to humans. When will we reach this possible dangerous slide? No one knows. You know, this, you know, the tempered zone, can that become very dangerous? We don't know, but they are basically sounding the alarm bell. Researchers make this clear, and I'll finish this video segment with, with this quote from them. What we do not know, and this is Professor Schellenhuber, what we do not know is whether the climate system can be safely, and he, he put it in quotes, parked near 2 degrees C above pre-industrial level as the Paris Agreement envisions, or if it will, once pushed so far, slip down the slope towards a hothouse planet. Research must assess this risk as soon as possible. So there you have it. We're heating up the planet. And we make, we're probably going to make it so hot that it threatens uh, human civilization. Again, I add as a cautionary note, whole conveyor belt and the question of thermal inertia. So there you have it. Now I will admit that you know when I when I go through the the peer reviewed journals and preparing these reports for you, I really do not see a lot of studies examining the aspect of the conveyor belt in relation to everything else that's being reported. So um, Probably because it's different disciplines, I, I'm not sure, but I really that's something I really would like to see addressed. So anyway, there you have it. Making things so much hotter for ourselves that uh, if things continue as they go, the temperatures do rise as they do, uh, it does not bode well for long-term survival of human civilization. Thank you for your time. Hey folks, this is Jim here reminding you to uh, subscribe uh, to this channel, to uh, share my videos, tell others of the work that I do here. Uh, I also ask that if you are not already a, a patron at Patreon, to please uh, consider becoming a patron at Patreon. You can find the information in the description box below the video. Uh, I'm asking you to help support the work that I do. I do not take uh, any money from uh, corporations or uh, from any other uh, sources, so the information I share with you is the actual science as it comes out of the peer-reviewed journals. 
So there is no BS, there's no propaganda, there's no agenda. It's just I present the science and I explain to you what it means, or at least my interpretations of it, based on my own experience as a scientist. I want this channel to grow. I consider, while I discuss many different uh, topics here, I, you notice I do focus a lot on climate issues. I consider climate uh, change to be the most pressing issue facing humanity today. Thus, I consider it important to disseminate this information to uh, a wider and wider, more and more people. And I need your help uh, to do this. So, yes, please subscribe. Uh, please tell others of the work that I do here. Please uh, share my videos on social media platforms with your social media groups, what, what have you. We need to get uh, this information out there. So uh, for those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, I thank you greatly for your support and continued support. It does mean a lot to me. So together we can get this information to more and more people. Thank you. Thank you for your support.